Hey gang, what's good? Welcome to another art episode of The Art of Wes Gardner. And uh, today we got a good episode. We're going to be doing some time-lapse painting of a Metal Gear Solid piece of fan art of Solid Snake, or boy, you know, we got to do it. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about imposter syndrome, um, how to kind of juggle that feeling to turn it into motivation rather than kind of depression. Um, but then at the very end, what we're going to do is um, I'm actually able to announce two clients that I'm working for. Uh, definitely put it on your radar because these are mind-blowing. Super excited to share them with you. Can't show the art yet. So that's still under NDA. But I think you guys are going to be pretty stoked with who the clients themselves are. I know I was, and I still am. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> Hey gang, it's Wes. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a Metal Gear Solid like fan art piece, something a little more, I don't want to say cartoony, but I, I wanted to do something where I didn't really freak out too much about it looking like someone else's art, if that makes sense. And I just, I just kind of went for it. I, uh, yeah, I wanted to cover something today before we get into the big reveals about new clients and all that stuff. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the pressure of, at least that I'm feeling, I can only, of course, speak for myself, but that pressure of not thinking you're good enough or like, oh, they're going to find out I'm a fraud, uh, you know, that type of thing. And it's also known as imposter syndrome. You've probably heard the term before. But usually imposter syndrome is, is someone of a quality uh, in their respective field that does not think they're good enough. And it's rampant in the art community. Um, it's actually rampant in a whole lot of communities. And it's the same type of uh, personality type, at least from what I've found. And I'm very much part of that personality type. Uh, the kind of overachiever, workaholic, you know, hey, I need to, I need to get better. I, there's only limited time on this planet, man. And I got to be the best. And not better than anyone, but I got to be the best me I can be. And any day I'm not the best I, is a day wasted. Like, it's that sort of, probably not the healthiest mentality. <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about mental health in a, in a future episode. Um, but. I think it's related. I think it's a personality trait thing. And there's a pressure, especially with something that you love to do. And for me, it's art. Um, to, to live up to these standards, to these, I, I guess it'd be fictional. Like fictional standards. You're putting people on, on a, a pedestal and thinking that they're, oh, no one will ever be as good as James Gurney. No one will ever be the best, like Craig Mullins is the best. You know, like there's names that you kind of tie to and you really look up to these people. And it's, it's a hard pill to swallow to think that like, I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to get there. And you keep beating yourself up. And I know at least what I found is that it's a big detriment to my actual, like letting stuff happen, like creative stuff. There's always that, the silly platitudes, like Wayne Gretzky saying, you always miss the shots you don't take. Uh, it's cheesy, but that stuff's true, man. Like if you're so worried about living up to the standard or like failing or not being as good as so-and-so, you're never going to make anything. You're just going to sit around. And, and at a certain point that just becomes an excuse to not do it. Right. And I don't want to like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel okay about that being the thing. Um, yeah, there's so many good art. Oh my gosh, there's so many good artists. And I follow hundreds of them, hun literally like 300 of them on ArtStation. Um, God, half a thousand on Twitter. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many. And I look at their stuff all the time. I look at Ahmed Aldori. I look, I look at Ethan Becker. I look at Ergo Josh. I look at Ross Draws. I, I you know, uh, if they're a big YouTube name, uh, I, I definitely have them on my playlist that I watch every day to kind of keep up with the, with the Robinsons, as it were. Um, but also, it's, it, it's nice to get that fuel, to see how good other people are. And then I tell myself, instead of, I'm never going to get that good, 
I try to tell myself, oh man, I can't wait until I'm that good. Like, I can't wait until I'm at that level, even. And that, that's why getting some gigs under your belt, whether it's uh, freelance opportunities or like private commissions or something like that, is a really good confidence boost because someone's going to hire you. Um, don't do it for free. Get, get paid. Get that money. You know what I'm saying? But uh, do some personal commissions. Go for it. And if you're, in, if you're thinking, oh, no one's going to hire me, stuff like that. That just means you need to improve to build the confidence up a little bit. Not that the art's bad. I, I don't believe in good and bad art. I really don't. I tell my students that and my mentees that all the time. Like, I don't, I don't think of art as good and bad so much as I think of art as effective or ineffective. So are you telling the story you want to tell in the best way possible? Oh, not really. Oh, people people complain about not being able to tell what's going on. Well, maybe your values need work. You know, you can tie every criticism, even if the person's not a trained artist. I actually like getting feedback from people that are not trained artists um, and not sort of the pat on the back. Wow, you're so talented stuff. But like, I don't really know what this is about. Like, what's going on here? That tells me I need a better clarity of idea. Uh, I, I want to, it, to appeal to people that don't know what they're looking for, but they know it's good if they look at it. You know what I'm saying? And of course, getting pro feedback is always invaluable because other pros have been there as well, and they're going to help you out. They're going to try to look at it. Hey, keep your eye on this. Hey, look at your 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 edges are kind of muddy and like everything's kind of flowing together, and you know there's not a crisp uh, differentiation between the background and the character. Or let's say there's too much of a differentiation and you need to blend them in a little bit more i mean that's the type of stuff that being with a a skilled pro um and having a mentor mentee type situation could be good it could be a nice relationship that way because you get that confidence boost and i think imposter syndrome starts going away when you stop worrying about other people uh it i still have it i'm still way guilty of it i think everybody does to a certain extent it's a healthy ego check of like holy crap how am i going to get that good um but like with this one i you know i could have done this in the style of so and so and referenced a whole bunch of images of somebody's painting that or somebody's art of dramatic you know action movie whatever but i kind of on this one i was like you know what man i just like solid snake <laughs> i just i just like metal gear let me just draw it. Let me just draw and see what happens and who cares. And I'm going to make 50 million other paintings in my life. Like this is not my legacy. Like, you know, I think we put, at least I do. I put a lot of weight. I used to put a lot of weight on every single piece. This has to be the greatest of all time. It has to be the best. And that's too much pressure. At the end of the day, just make stuff. And you're going to get better just by how much work you do. I mean, everyone's going to say that quality is better than quantity, but what I tell artists whenever they get started is quantity is quality. Just do work. Just fill up a notebook, fill up a sketchbook, just open up canvases in, you know, open up canvases in Photoshop or Krita or whatever and like draw circles and try to light them in different directions. It doesn't have to be you know, a poster for the new Star Wars. It could be anything. Just draw straight lines. Just get more dexterous that way. Like, you know what you need to work on. If you really dig down deep, you know what you got to work on. I know for a fact, I'll be straight up with you guys. I need to work on um, clarity of sketching. Like, I need to work on line art. Um, line art is a very big thing for me because I like to hide behind painting. Uh, painting with cool edges and blends and colors. No, isn't that cool and pretty? Um, but I really need to solidify my ideas before I get to the paint step. I'm just not patient enough. I need to work on my patience. Um, so in the way that I come from the train of thought of, hey, the more the merrier, just keep making stuff, I also need to learn how to slow way down. And that's something that I, I have figured out with my new clients that I'm going to announce here in just a minute. Um, but yeah, imposter syndrome is a weird one. I think it's a thing that never goes away. But he, here's, my, here's my rally cry to you, okay? You have something that no one else has. I promise you. I guarantee it. I 1,000% guarantee it. Perfect example. Do you know that right now you're the only person sitting 
at your address or wherever you're at in your car or watching on TV or wherever you're at listening to this right now, in the world, at that location right now, just you. You're the one. You are the one. You're Neo right now. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no one else in exactly the same situation you are. And take that same mentality to growing up. You have a lot of memories no one else has. Uh, your future is going to be something no one else will have. It's yours. It belongs to you. So get out there and do your thing. But what, what this really means is you have a one-up on every other person that's ever been born as part of the human race. That you are you. And there are no duplicates. There's no duplicate. You have your own mind. You have your own... Uh, <laughs> my dog's going to start barking. Um, you have your own way of life and you have your own outlook and memories and all that stuff comes into play whenever you're making art or whenever you're producing music or whatever it is like right now i adore metal gear solid i adore it i'm gonna do infinity fan arts of metal gear but it's just fun every once in a while just to sit down and just do one and then just mess around and be like oh yeah that kind of looks like solid snake because I like it. I, I, that's, I literally grew up playing it. I, I remember the PlayStation 1 demo disc uh, from official PlayStation magazine that had the demo on it. And I figured out a way you could get the Nikita rocket launcher in the back of the truck. You have to go in the vent up top at Shadow Moses Island. And then you got to back up out of it. See, I know. I could go all, <laughs> all day on it. But uh, for real, you have memories that you can pull into these things. And don't think it's lame. If anything, uh, there, there's something, uh, it, it kind of goes for professional wrestling and this is where I kind of learned it, but I've also seen something similar said by artists and art directors that it is better to be exciting and wrong rather than boring and right. So like, yeah, I could make solid stakes. I could draw the skull and I could light the anatomy and I could, you know, I, oh, yeah, give me 30 hours and yeah, you're going to get a photorealistic solid snake. It's going to happen. But hour and a half, two hours, and I just want to throw down some colors and get the idea of Solid Snake walking through a hallway with a famas, like him and Meryl just broke out of the prison cell. You know what I mean? Like there's the energy there. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a great scene. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. You probably see, uh, like you probably saw on the, on the Pure F uh, stuff, you can see the, the Meryl thing. I'm no rookie. Oh, great scene, man. God, I got to go play that game again. Uh, but that's what I like about this fan art stuff. We'll talk about fan art on another one, but just know people that say fan art does not get you jobs are full of shit. Do as much fan art as you want. How else are they going to know you can draw their character? And speaking of that, we're going to wrap this one up, and I'm going to go announce who we're working for now, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. So uh, take it away, me, I guess. All right, hope you like the time lapse of that Solid Snake uh, fan art. You, you see I kind of jump in between different programs, but hey, it's all good. <laughs> Every program has its own unique thing that I really like about it. I just need to like get developer skills good enough to make my own like big deal. But what we got going is working, so, uh, so I like it. But yeah, uh, now to the big reveals, I guess. These are two clients. Uh, I, can, I can talk about the client. Can't talk about the work yet. Uh, that's more of them to reveal. But uh, yeah, they, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to talk about uh, who I'm actually working for and working with now. So still freelance, still up on commissions. If you're a company and want to hire me, appreciate you. Um, definitely do that. But <laughs> uh, let's start with the first one. The first one's a pretty big deal. So uh, our good friends over at the BAM box. Now, if you don't know what the BAM box is, you should. Um, I think everyone does, so I'm not going to be telling you something you don't already know. But BAM box is the OG original gangster subscription box that dealt with autographs from celebrities. And these are uh, big celebrities that they're getting autographs from, man. Um, One of the coolest things about it, of course, is the celebrity autographs, but also each box comes with exclusive one-of-a-kind signed like signature autograph sharpie marker uh pieces of fan art based off of that box's theme or like an intellectual property that ties into it because they have different boxes 
they have like uh they have a new anime box that's coming out but they have uh sci-fi geek you know pop culture that type of thing so whatever you're into whatever your version of nerddom is they got something for you uh but i am working on one of my favorite ips they gave me a choice of two i can't say what either one is yet <laughs> i will whenever they the boxes get announced and people get them and stuff i'll be able to talk about what that decision making process was like but uh you're gonna get hand signed exclusive limited edition prints um of i would say my two best paintings i've ever done what and i say two paintings because you can get the standard box or you might luck out and get a variant so there's two completely different uh pieces that I have in there. It's definitely something you don't want to miss. You want to be there. You want to be there to witness it. You want to be there to see it happen. Say you got a, an original signed print. Um, the boxes are affordable too. It's like 30 bucks a month, but they, they come packed with stuff. Uh, yeah, so check it out, thebambox.com. Uh, go sign up for it, man. Um, I'll be able to hype up what my box is whenever it gets announced because I haven't announced it yet. Uh, but be sure, be sure you go get it. Um, so yeah, Bambox, amazing, amazing, and also amazing. Um, let's mark this one off the old bucket list. That should give you a clue right there if you've been a fan of my Twitter and Instagram and channel and all that stuff for a while. Um, yeah, I still, I'm still wrapping my head around it uh, on this next one. Uh, super stoked to announce this. I'm going to announce the company and the IP that I'm working on. Um, but th this is such a, a big announcement and big moment for me that I don't think just me telling what it is is worth it. So here's a cheesy little uh, like trailer snippet <laughs> that I want to put in because it, it deserves it. Once you see it, you'll know. You'll know. Right, man, your boy got Warhammer. Woo! Oh, uh, Warhammer Wrath and Glory by Cubicle 7. Cubicle 7, I've been a fan of them for a long time, for a while. And uh, I get their books off Drive Through RPG. You can buy them straight from their website now, cubicle7games.com. Uh, but I'm, I'm working for them. We're, we're doing Wrath and Glory, the tabletop RPG. Uh, if you're familiar with like Dungeons and Dragons and true role playing. Uh, like that. That is what Wrath and Glory is. You basically get to roleplay your own character in the Gilead system. Uh, there is some dope stuff in the works. <laughs> like they 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 reached out and they're like, "Hey, are you interested?" And I was like, "Uh, yeah, very." And there, you know, and I was expecting, "Oh, here's a spot illustration. Here's a little, you know, oh, just to kind of get stuff started." But no, uh, the the team over there and our art director, our main director. It's like, hey, how do you feel about these four pieces um, at varying sizes, like full blast? Like, how do you feel about that? And I was like, I feel great. Let's do it. <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. I can't wait to show you the art. It is unreal. Yeah, just all of the artists that work there. Because I'm a fan of a lot of the people that are working at Cubicle 7. I mean, J.G. O'Donohue and Sam Manley. I mean, there's uh, so many people. Story Killinger. Um, I think that's how his username is pronounced. Just incredible art. Uh, people I've followed on Twitter for like two years, three years now. So I'm in that lexicon, and it's weird, and it's awesome, and I can't wait to see it in print. Um, but yeah, another thing, uh, while we're talking about print, by the way, um, I know with COVID stuff, it's been, it's been kind of wild. But let me find, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let me talk about this, some other news. Some other news. You guys recognize this magazine? The old Imagine FX. This is issue 190. 
um, right here. But what's funny is if you turn to page, what is this, page 20? Um, who's, who's that guy? Who's, who is he? What's this guy doing? What's that bald guy doing in there? Um, dream come true. Let me actually grab, like, legit, let me grab this. Hold on. Um, yes. And then, here's a small sampling of my Imagine FX. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, actually, every single one of these are. One's just a special edition. But uh, Imagine FX from, what's this one? February of uh, 2009. Oh, let, me, let me have a seat here. Ugh. Yep, Imagine FX of 2009, about creature design. Uh, Sparse concept art one. Got some exclusive Loish poster action right there. Um, also, there's special concept art edition stuff right here. Um, yeah, my subscriber copies, uh, I have boxes of Imagine FX magazine going back over a decade, and that's not fake, like, that's, that's a real deal, so, so to be part of issue 190, to be part of it at all, like, to even get mentioned in my name in print is one thing, but to have a two-page full-color spread. A uh, huge shout out to Imagine FX for what that, that's a that's another dream come true. Bucket list signed it off, man. Um, unreal. So we're just getting started, baby. There's other stuff down the pipeline. I'm super stoked for you guys to see this stuff. But uh, yeah, hope you have a good time. Hope you learned a little something about the imposter syndrome. Everybody has it, you know. Um, just use it to motivate you. Don't let it get you down. You're the only you you got. So hang in there. Keep shining your light. Keep doing your thing. I can't wait to see it, and who knows? I mean, uh, I, I buy Imagine FX all the time. I want to see your stuff in there. Go submit it, man. Make dreams reality. Go for it. Uh, but that's my time. I'm Wes. You know where to find me. Here, Twitter, Insta, Facebook, uh, kind of wherever you want. So, um, yeah, www.wesleygardner.com if you want business inquiries and email me. Hit me up. Uh, you know the drill, man. But until next time, you guys take care. Stay safe. Wear a freaking mask. Still, do it forever. <laughs> uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.